Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Hope you guys had a wonderful Friday, um, restful Friday, because all we can do is stay at home. So I'd love to just see your names and bright, shiny faces. I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to time into the clock. Hi, Victoria. Hi, Carmen. Brenna, Emily Molina, Miranda Hobbs, Promise to Go. All future salon owners right there. Victoria Pierce, everybody that shows up early. Lauren Baldwin, Elena Frias, Marabella Hernandez, Jennifer Orr, Riri Gonzalez, Lauren Rivera, Chandler, Lindy, Serena, Miles, oh, Tabby, <clears throat> Crystal Hartman, good morning, Alana. Good morning, Morgan. Hey, Jojo. Connie Ramos, Kylie Cunningham. Hi, baby. Mama misses you. Lauren Garabedian, Christy Acevedo, Carson Ivy. Good morning, Gracie. Herminia, welcome. Our newest baby to the family. Rosie Springer, Cassie Graff, Jennifer Rodriguez, McKenna Klecka. I'm going to say good morning to you all. And can't tell you how much I miss you all. I miss you too, baby. Kylie, hi, Julia. You guys have no idea. This is, I think it's harder for us teachers, I think. Well, maybe not, because some of you, yeah, but it's really hard for us too. Hi, Destiny. Good morning. Good morning, Valerie. Our other new baby, Valerie De Los Santos. She's our new nail tech. All right, Monica Merga. Joel. Hi, Joel. Hey, Molly's in the house. Ava, good morning. Marina, good morning. And Elisa, Jessica Cardenas. Jessica is also one of our brand new babies that just started. Good morning, Jessica. So what I want you guys to do is um, go ahead and take this time to grab pen and paper. And I'm going to continue saying hello. Hi, Chloe. Hi, Taryn. We'll give you guys two minutes. We have a lot of work to do. Um, make sure that you are rewinding these videos. If you don't get the information, I'm going to try to make it as quick and painless because it's a lot of terminology. But the good news is this is the end. It's almost the end of the skin chapter. And just a quick note. Um, this chapter is really um, important for all facets of our learning. So we have estheticians, cosmetologists, and nail techs. So I encourage all students, no matter what branch of this industry you're in, to learn this because this is going to either keep you from hurting someone or make you aware of certain skin conditions and everything that you may not have been aware of and uh, help you guide your career uh, to a successful future. Hi, Yasmin. Hi, Marie. Hi, Kimberly Root. Yay. It's so good to see you guys. All right. So I don't have essential oils today. I just kind of woke up. I'm, I'm running a little behind because I had, I didn't realize how many um, definitions and I realized that this chapter is so <laughs> chunky. And there's a lot of information and some of you may not have turned in your assignment um, or completed your assignment. Um, so what this is, is kind of like the, you got the introduction, this is the outroduction of the course. So I'm going to give you a lot of different uh, terminologies. We're going to go through this as quickly as possible. I've got notes for my visual learners. So those of you, <laughs> when he's in the kitchen watching me. Hi, Wendy. Hi, boss lady. Uh, this is, of course, um, special delivery from Wendy Baldwin. And I just want to give her a big shout out because she's the one that's giving us this information to impart you guys, uh, impart on you guys. So you have all the knowledge to pass that written and to just be successful. So um, I want to I want to just give her like the congrats because she doesn't cut corners when it comes to education. And we really appreciate her for that. Um, and so all of this stuff is really um, important, really, really um, integral into your success, your understanding, um, and most of all, your graduation. All right. So 
before we get started, I'm supposed to give you guys a little bit of time. Winnie wanted me to give y'all 30 minutes, but because I've seen the lives and how smart you guys are and how on top of it you are, I'm just going to do it a little bit different, but the same thing. So don't get mad, mama. All right. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and ask you guys to pull up the email that you got with the primary, secondary, hypertrophies, melanoderma, that sheet. And then the first few, these are the ones you're going to have to work for. I'm going to give you all the other ones. So I'm going to give you a chance to either check mark these or write them down. You're going to have to find the definition for me and give me the answer in a live chat. So the first one is milia. These are easy. I left y'all the easy ones. Acne, rosacea, osteotosis, seborrhea, steatoma, furuncle, and carbuncle. So these are the only ones that I'm going to ask for live chat participation. And if you guys can even tell me what family these belong to, it's even better. Okay? Because they are all connected together. All right. So I'm going to give you guys like five minutes to write these or not even five to write these down. Write them down. Write them down quickly. Take a picture or screenshot. I know y'all are good at that young people. Screenshot it. Yes. Um, the email that was sent, there was, it was, I believe four or five pages. It was the last one. It's, it's from the book, from your textbook. But if you don't have the email, no worries, Crystal. You could just write these down. Again, what I would do is because of the length of time we have is just screenshot everything and then go back, write it down later. All right. That way you have the information. But you guys should have gotten in your email the worksheet for this particular part. All right. So I'm going to put these down. So those are the ones, the, the list I gave you, those are the ones we're going to do at the end. And you guys are going to give me... <coughs> the uh, definitions to those, okay? So everybody's clocking in still. Hi, Deja. Hi, Alexis. Uh, Katie is saying you received two, one at 9 and one at 10 a.m. So it is the, it's going to look like a copy of one of your workbooks. It's going to have all of the terminology um, laid out for you. All right, so I'm going to start with, this is the primary, um, and then you, again, you if you want to go ahead and label your, if you don't have uh, the sheet, you we're talking about primary, secondary, hypertrophies, melodermal, uh, I'm sorry, melanoderma, leucoderma, pseudoriferous glands, and then we're going to be doing also the... Sebaceous glands and then the inflammatory disorders. Not necessarily in that order, but maybe. I don't know. If you didn't get it, it's fine. Just just write the notes. The word in the notes. Okay. So this will cor correlate with the 10 a.m. email. Okay. So those of you that didn't get it yet, you will be getting it. And this is going to correlate it. Perfect. All right. So the first word is macule. Hopefully my handwriting is nice and neat where you can see it. Macule. And that's going to be in your primary category. Does anybody have a definition? If not, I'm going to give it to you now. Macule, macule is a flat, discolored area of the skin. And you don't have to write this word for word. You shorthand for those of you guys um, that... Don't take a lot of notes really quickly because we're going to kind of move through this not so slowly, but not too quickly either for the ones that already have the definitions. Okay. So again, that first word was macule and there's a definition of flat discolored area of the skin. Or you could just put discolored area of the skin. Perfectly fine. The next one. Papule. Papule. So you already know that a macule is going to be a smaller area of the skin. Papule is a little bit different. The definition, a small raised solid pimple. 
Sorry, it's supposed to say does not contain fluid. Let's see that not. I was in a hurry this morning. Does. We're going to add that does not contain fluid. These are still our primaries. Yes. Small raised solid pimple that does not contain fluid. Okay, put this right here so I don't lose my place. Okay, next one is vesicle. And please forgive me for my misspelling. Sometimes I don't get that right. Vesicle. So you have macule, papule, and vesicle. And a vesicle is a small, fluid-filled sac or cyst. Small fluid-filled sac or cyst. And you guys, if you guys have another answer for some of these, um, sorry, I'm moving my chair. Feel free to chime in, it's cool. Um, if you don't get the answers, Joanna is kind enough to type them into the live chat if you have any questions. But hopefully you guys have all this written down already. Next one, Bula. And this is a fluid filled blister that is larger than a vesicle. You could say blister larger than a vesicle. You don't have to do the examples, Tabitha, if you don't want to. I mean, it's nice for, for, but I have the answers. So you could say what it is. You don't have to say what causes it. And just in case those of you that a bullet is like when you burn yourself, um, it's not good to pop those. They can become infected. Skin around them is like a protective layer. <clears throat> Pustule. The next one. We're still in our primaries. Pustule. Notice the operative word. Pus. Okay. That means there's some kind of bacteria present. It's a small pimple containing pus. Or morbid matter is what the book, some of the books call it morbid matter. And that's bacteria, sebum, skin cells. And it's generally caused by poor hygiene, poor skin care. Sometimes a condition. Next one is a wheel. It's pronounced wheel like the wheels on the bus, wheel. And then the definition is a red swollen mark left on the flesh accompanied by itching. So a mosquito bite, a bite, an insect bite. Yeah. Wheel. Hives, exactly. It's a great example, Monica. Thank you. All right. Am I going too fast? Oh, your chat works, but not the video. Oh, I'm sorry, Destiny. Okay. Try to pull it up again, and JoJo is writing the answers in the live chat. Gracie, feel free to comment, Gracie, if you're on, just, uh, you know, to help JoJo out a little bit. Okay. The next one is tumor. Tumor. This is a scary word for us. You never really want to hear this word when it comes to your doctor or your health condition. But some tumors are not um, cancerous. You can have benign ones, but. Okay, a tumor is a swelling of a part of the body caused by an abnormal growth of tissue. So you can have tumors on the outside of your body, on your skin or the inside as well. And Jojo, you don't have to type everything. I, they can always screenshot. 
because I don't want you to, because I'm going to go pretty fast here. And then they have to do their own. <laughs> so you can just, if you don't, I mean, Joanna's trying to help, but if you want to just rewind this, I hope that's why I wrote these out so you could read my handwriting and it'd be easy to see and screenshot. But I'd love to have Gracie chime in on one of these if she can. Maybe she has some terminology she wants to share with us. All right, next one is a scale. That looks like an L, I'm sorry, that's a C. S-C-A-L-E, scale. I know, Joe, just what I'm saying. They don't have, you don't have to type everything. Because <laughs> some people want the whole definition. I know. That's why I'm saying if you guys have to put your phone up to the screen and screenshot this and then sit down with your phone, that's what I do when I you know, have to learn something on the fly. And then I sit down and write it down in the definitions. And that way I'm not missing anything. Okay, so the definition is a thick flake of skin. Okay, probably a symptom of a medical condition. Estheticians and nail techs. This is something you're going to come across a lot on hands feet, bottom of the feet, skin, face, sometimes in the areas like around the nose. Uh, I know that I get a lot of dryness like right here sometimes, um, but it's not this particular thing. It's a scale. This is actually a thicker part of the skin that actually flakes. So it's commonly found on the scalp. Next one, crest. And no, it's not what you put on top of a pie. Okay, crest. And again, if you got the email, all of these words are going to be listed. Maybe not in any exact order, but they're all going to be there. Okay, so crust. Very good. Dry sebum. Or pus mixed with epithelial cells. I know that's kind of gross. So it's like a crusting on the skin. It's not contagious. It's a scab. Exactly, Tabitha. Tabitha's on point. Very good. Dry sebum or pus mixed with epithelial cells. Next one, excoriation. That sounds like a really, really fancy word, but it's not. Excoriation is just a braided or scraped skin. If you scratch yourself, if someone scratches you, you fall down, you skin your elbow, that's what excoriation means. It means you, we used to call it road rash back in the day. Yes, abrasion to the epidermis. Yay, good job. Excoriated skin. Excellent. Next one is Fisher. And I'm sure you guys got these in the last videos, and that's perfectly okay. This is just for this particular worksheet. Um, and it's just kind of a recap on everything you've learned. Doesn't hurt to know stuff. So um, repetition is the key to remembering. So the next one is Fisher, and here's the definition. Cracks in the dermis, cracks in the dermal layer for my, for my estes. Estheticians are like, what? The dermal layer. Estheticians, sound off. What is the dermal layer? Give me an, a, a definition for the dermal layer for all of the cosmos and the nail techs. What is the dermal layer of the skin? Yes. Oh, Lauren. Yes. This is a hard chapter. Yes. And skin stuff. If you don't like it, you're not going to learn all these fish or cracks in the dermis. What is the second layer of the skin? Oh, Taylor Campbell. Okay. So that's pretty, that's pretty deep. It's not just a, a superficial crack. It's actually penetrates. And if you don't do something about it, it can get worse. Second layer. Look at, uh, look at all the Estes. Dermal layer, good guys. Next one is a scar. Sorry, my C's look like L's, 
but that is a scar. Promise says skin between the epidermis and the subcutaneous tissue. Yes. Boy, Estes, you guys almost have to be like doctors. Okay. This is the definition of mark left by a wound. Mark left by a wound. All right. Ulcer is the next one. Most of you can consider this part of like a stomach ulcer, but this could be anywhere. Okay, an ulcer is an open sore on an external or internal surface of the body that fails to heal. So an ulcer is a reoccurring wound or an open sore that does not heal. You have to get treatment for ulcers. Some people have stomach ulcers or ulcers in their esophagus from eating the wrong foods or hot foods. Sometimes foods with a lot of spice and peppers in them can erode the esophagus. Yes. All right. Yes. Katie's giving y'all love, Estes. Your mama's on. Oh, Katie's in the house. None of the Estes know all this. All right. The next one. This is probably going to be from a nail text. Nail technicians, I know you know what this one is. I know you deal with this on the daily, especially with pedicures. It's more common than people know. Very good. All right. It's a callus, and this is a thickened part of the skin that has been subjected to friction. So I want my nail techs. Sound off, nail techs. Where do you find this? Where do you find calluses mostly? Hardened skin, yes. A thickened part of the skin that has been subjected to friction. Hardened skin, Deja, very good. Where do we find this, nail techs? Nail techies? Feet, yes. On the feet. All right, y'all are so smart. Next one is Veruca. Heels, feet, toes, yes. You can also find them on the balls of the feet, too. If someone is like an athletic person or ballerinas have them, yes. Heels of the foot is most common. Veruca is the next one. And this is also known as a wart. It's a hard, grainy growth that appears on the heels or the balls of the feet. So people can also get Barucas. Okay, Baruka is wart. If y'all just want to write wart, that's perfectly acceptable. The wart. Serena Kalina says the wart. Okay. Next one is a skin tag. Skin tag. And that's not a game you play with your children because you're in, in your house. <laughs> it's a common skin growth in which a short, narrow stalk sticks out. So it's not flat and round. That's usually a mole. That's a characteristic of a mole. Skin tags are actually long. And you can just have those removed. Yes. <laughs> Lauren says she cut off one with scissors one time. I know. I twisted one off of my underarm. Something, you know, I it was just bothering me and it didn't hurt. So I was playing with it one day and I just kept twisting it and it just came right off. But it, I hear they grow back. So not sure. Very good. A common skin growth. Very common. Next one is Colasma. Colasma. <laughs> do what you got to do, Lauren. Colasma is a temporary condition in which large brown patches form on the skin. And this could be due to like hyperpigmentation or some kind of reaction to something your body does. But that's colasma. It's temporary. 
Uh, it's a condition in which large brown patches form on the skin. Liver spots. Yes, Katie Bo. I forgot to write the parenthesis, but Katie Bo is correct. They're also known as liver spots. Yes. Maria says during the pregnant. Yes, you can get colasma during pregnancy. Absolutely. All right. The next one is Nevis. And I've seen it spelled N-E-V-U-U-S or N-E-V-U-S, but a Nevis is your birthmark. Birthmark. Fancy name. Next one, albinism. Or albino is the plural form if you see one, but albinism is a condition. It's hereditary, okay? It's not contracted from person to person. Um, it's a disorder in which there is little or no production, sorry, melanin production in the skin. People with albinism usually have higher risk of skin cancer because they don't have that protective shield of melanin. Um, so they, they, they burn. A lot of times they can't go out in the sunlight without being covered. Um, and usually the hyperpigmentation or the lack of pigment happens in their eyes too. So they have red eyes. White eyelashes, white eyebrows. Yes. All right, next one. Lack of melanin, right, Monica? Lack of pigment. Vitiligo. And again, those estheticians that are chiming in, people, if my definitions are too long, just look to the right of your screen. I know a lot of the Estes are in the house and they can give you the short version um, that, do we not do we not do moles? Oh, maybe moles is next, I'm sorry. They're not in the right order, but we'll get to it. So you can skip down a vitiligo. She's right, I should have done moles. I hope I have it, but I have the definition. All right, vitiligo is a condition in which the pigment is lost from areas of the skin, which causes white patches. So it looks like a speckling um, of the skin. Yes, spots or areas of lack of pigmentation. Let's see, let's go ahead moles. Oh. Okay. I'm gonna find moles because now it's bothering me. Oh, then I skip it. Oh, two. Okay. I did. All right, so I'm gonna give you the definition for moles because I'm gonna type it in. I did not make a card. So I'm gonna type in the definition of moles right now. All right, a small. Often slightly raised. Somebody can type it faster. Beat me to it. Blemish on the skin. Made by a high concentration of melanin. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Okay, so that's mole. A small, often slightly raised, blemished on the skin made by a high concentration of melanin. Yes. All right. Sorry about that, you guys. I got the 
I'm a little bit lost. Okay, so the next one, so we're done with the melanoderma. We're going, we did the leucoderma, vitiligo, and albinism. Now we're at the sudoriferous glands. I know this is probably out of order, but let's go ahead and do the sudoriferous glands. The first one I have is bromhydrosis. Bromhydrosis, bromhydrosis is how it's pronounced. Yes, Kylie is saying um, Michael Jackson bleached his skin because, well, he did have vitiligo and, and a lot of the makeup wasn't working for him. So he did do the skin bleaching for that. Exactly right. Very good. Bromhydrosis. This is BO. And this is what causes it. It's a combination of bacteria and sweat. So nobody has the right to walk around smelling bad. It's, this is an easy fix. Some people have a natural, what's called a stress sweat, that, that it's, it's, it's a different type of odor. You'll know the difference between somebody who's stressing out and their sweat smells strong or somebody who just has poor hygiene. But bromidrosis, and you can walk up to the next stinky person and go, you have bromidrosis. It's a bad smell. Okay, and it's bacteria and sweat and oil and cigarettes and whatever else people are taking. The next one is anhydrosis. Anhydrosis or anhydrosis. This is the inability to sweat. This is very, very, um, <laughs> I remember that because if you smell it, you go, bro, <laughs> bro, drosis, bro, bro, drosis. That's cute. Okay, inability to sweat. This is not a good condition to have. You must seek medical attention if you have anhydrosis because your sweat is your body's way of re, re um, uh, expelling toxins. So if you don't sweat, you need to have that looked at. Next one is hyperhidrosis. My handwriting's so big, I had to, it's one word, but I hyphenated it. It's hyperhidrosis. Yes, you do overheat, Ava. And you can pass out, you can have all kinds of other problems. Okay, all right. And then the definition for hyperhidrosis is excessive sweating, unrelated to body temperature and exercise. I short in the word temperature so temp is temperature excessive sweating or unrelated body temperature and exercise so this is just hyperhidrosis anytime you see the word hyper um it means excessive so these are people that just just sweat like i knew a guy he used to his palms used to just be wet from sweating and he it wasn't from working out just was disorder All right. The la last one for the pseudoriferous is malaria. Malaria. And this is a fever caused by a parasite that invades the red blood cells. You sweat a lot, Chandler. Really, girl? Excessive sweating? I used to, but I was in sports. What happened is I would get heated and then I couldn't stop sweating. So that's not necessarily hyperhidrosis. I think that's just like your body wanting to get rid of it. Okay, so malaria is a fever caused by a parasite that invades the red blood cells. Thank you, Jojo. And you guys, um, be sure to Thank Joanna. She's giving you the definitions just in case your your live is not working um, or if you're having internet connection problems. Um, dermatitis is the next one. And now we have entered the inflammatory disorders. So I'm a little bit out of order. So that's going to be the last grouping. Um, but you can just fill these in. I'm going to go through all of them. And then you guys are going to give me the sebaceous. So the dermatitis definition is an itchy inflammation of the skin. Um, the causes are, it could be chemical, which is called contact dermatitis, 
or a skin condition, which is like eczema or um, something else, the allergic reaction to food or a chemical or some kind of substance. Maybe you use the wrong soap, a fragrance, but there's a lot of reasons for dermatitis. That's something that's very common in our field for all of us. Thanks, Jojo. All right. The next one is eczema. Eczema. And I think a lot of kids, people have this, but they don't realize it until they get older. Yes. Eczema, sorry about squeezing that in, is an itchy inflammation of the skin thought to be linked to an overactive response by the body's immune system. They didn't know what caused it at first, but this is what it's thought to be caused by. An itchy inflammation of the skin thought to be linked to an overactive response by the body's immune system. They say sunlight is really good for eczema. Like you get out in the sun, um, certain things exacerbate it or make it worse. I don't know. All right. Mm, your sister, oh yes. Yes, it's, it's pretty bad for kids too, because it's, yeah, there's no cure for it either. All right, next one is impetigo. This one, my mom used to call it, I remember her saying school sores. Little nasty kids, school sores, okay? And a lot of kids got this back in when I was younger because there was really nothing, no cure or anything that you could do. You just kind of had to let it run and put a topical uh, ointment on it. But impetigo <clears throat> is a highly contagious um, skin infection that causes red sores on the face. Uh, it can be anywhere on the body, but it's usually on the face, around the mouth area. Um, it becomes infected <clears throat> when bacteria enters the body through broken skin. So you could literally be playing outside on the swing set, cut yourself, and then have some kind of bacteria invade it. And a lot of kids have this. Um, yeah, it's very contagious. So make sure that that little bump or that little scratch or that little red irritated lesion on your kid or child or baby is not impetigo because it spreads like wildfire. I got this and within, I'm going to say an eight hour period, I spread it to my sister, my mom, and I had it on my thigh. Like the, I scratched, I don't know what happened, but that's what the doctors, um, yes. All right. Very, very serious condition that you don't want to mistake for a fever blister or a pimple. And it is actually a sore. It's not a blister. It's a sore and it's inflamed. All right. Next one is folliculitis. Folliculitis. I finally learned how to pronounce this word because it used to confuse me when I was a student. Okay. And this is inflammation of the hair follicle. Some people call it a hair bump. People who usually um, get folliculitis are people or ethnic people who have a curved hair follicle. So that's basically when the hair regrows, it pierces into the skin, causes an inflammation, right? And then the next one, is pseudofolliculitis barbae. And that's razor bumps. And um, you'll see this on guys, a lot of guys who have the curly wavy hair, mostly black men. That's why black men never take a razor to their face. Um, they can't because of this particular condition. Uh, and that's just because of the way the hair follicle grows. So you'll see a lot of men of, of ethnicity shaving with like a clipper because of this condition. It's a skin condition that occurs as a result to shaving. And that's with the razor. Beard area, yes. But I've seen it like with clippers on the bed, like haircuts sometimes, if they do a razor and you have this condition in your skin, it could be pretty bad. Yes. 
If I shave, I will get it under my arms for sure. All right, the next one is conjunctivitis. Sorry about that. Handwriting, but conjunctivitis is pink eye. Very, very, very contagious. What they used to tell us is if you get conjunctivitis, throw away all of your makeup, your eye makeup, mascara, eyeliner. I don't care if you paid $75 for that MAC cosmetics, throw it away because you don't want that bacteria settling in your eyeshadow or your mascara and then reusing it. Because every time you get conjunctivitis, it gets worse every time. Conjunctivitis is inflammation or infection of the white part of the eye caused by bacteria or a viral infection. Yes. Yes. I used to get it too. And I didn't realize because I was using my friend's mascara. That's how you get, I mean, really, you get it because that person may have had it and said, oh, I'm not going to throw that mascara away. Then they let you use it and there you go. So, yeah. And it doesn't necessarily have to be caused by makeup. It can be caused by just the bacterial. Maybe you rub your eye. Um, all right. And let me see. This one is for the sebaceous glands. This one is out of order. See, I told you guys. This one's going into the sebaceous. Um, comedone is a blackhead. Okay, comedone is blackhead. That's a technical term. It's dead skin and oil collected at the opening of the skin follicle. So it's just kind of a blockage. You can probably just extract those. They have those little metal things that you can use to extract those. Okay. So what I want to do, it is 1042 right now. I'm going to give you guys five minutes to give me the definitions for these words that I held up in the very beginning. Okay. All right. If I already gave them to you, just take them. But I did not. So you're going to tell me what milia, acne, rosacea, steatosis, seborrhea, steatoma. And we're all going to write these down together and you're going to participate in the live chat. Oh, Carson. Open comedone is a black head, closed is a white head. Look, see, she's already looking out for y'all. Okay, take a few minutes. I'm going to take a quick little restroom break. And we'll go over those, and then I will be done with you guys for this morning.
man, look at this. He's going off. You making your mama proud. Look at you, Cosmos too. Thank you guys. Oh my gosh, each one teach one. So I've got Monica Merga, Carmen Pacheco, Maria, Oliveria. They're giving you the definitions even better than I could give you. So make sure that you're tuning into the live chat and writing these down. Chandler, carbuncle, severe absence uh, or multiple boils in the skin caused by typically, yes, infected with Staphylococcus. Excellent. Carmen Pacheco, carbuncle, large boil or multiple boils. Yes, Christy Acevedo, seborrheic Cali patches. <laughs> She's using big words and red skin on mainly the oily parts of the body. Very good. Um, Crystal, we are not going to turn these in just yet. You're just going to hold on to them and put them in your binder and compile them with the rest of your notes. All right. Is everybody ready for the last few? Okay. I only have a few. I'm sorry. And then thank you so much, Estes. I'm going to get you. These are not in any specific order. I'm going to try to do them in this best order as I can. All right. Done. So we're doing the um, sebaceous glands. So the first one I have for you is milia. So my comedones, well, you've got comedones. Okay. So milia. Very good, you guys. Y'all ready, ready, ready. Milia is also known as a whitehead. Tiny white bumps where the skin flakes and becomes trapped under the surface. So the skin flakes off and it just becomes trapped. And those are those little white bumps. You can just kind of pop them. Some people get them like right here. All right. So that's Milia. Also known as a whitehead. These are not um, contagious, so you can't spread them to someone. The next one was comedones. Y'all got comedones. Let's see. I didn't get that one. So we got the definition for comedones because the SDs were so kind to give it to you, but I'm just going to, it's dead skin and oil. Um, it's also known as a blackhead. So if you just want to write comedone blackhead, um, collected at the opening of the skin follicle. All right. And then I do have acne. So Estes, you chiming in. Okay, acne is inflamed or infected sebaceous glands. And acne can spread from one sebaceous gland to the other. So inflamed or infected sebaceous glands, that's acne. Okay, I have Rosacea is the next one. Very good. I'm looking at y'all's answers. McKenna says red pus filled sebaceous glands. Yep. Millie, this order of the sebaceous glands. Look at you. Oh, y'all are so dang smart. Okay. Rosacea. Red pus filled bumps on the face. That's what rosacea is. The cause is unknown, I was reading. I was like, what causes it? Because I like to know about stuff and what causes it, okay? And um, it's just a condition that happens in some people. The next one, esteatosis. And um, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, forgive me. I'm learning just like you guys are. Osteotosis. Lauren says they aren't always pus filled. Yes, correct, Lauren. Rosacea, if you're talking about rosacea, no, they're not always filled with pus. Okay. Um, the definition persistent dry scaling of the skin due to shortage of sebum. So that means your body doesn't produce enough oil. So that's what happens in the, the skin. It, that's the effects of the skin. It dries and starts to scale. Sometimes you can peel it off. 
it's the areas that uh, happens in the winter a lot too for me okay next one Severia And anytime you see the word SEB, Sebo, that's going to mean sebum, something to do with sebum. And it's a condition that causes scaly patches on the skin, usually due to lack or, uh, or non-production of sebum. Yes, dry, scaly skin. Yep. Very good. Dandruff. Oh, Lauren is absolutely right. Okay. Severia. Usually found on the scalp, but sometimes it can be found on any areas of the body that get oily. All right. The last one I have, and then you're you're gonna have to give the uh, definition of a carbuncle because I ran out of cards, <laughs> or I'll give it to you. Okay. So here's the next one. This is called a furuncle, and this one is not a furry uncle, but a painful pus-filled bump under the skin. This is caused by an infected hair follicle, usually. It's a large boil, yes, it can be. And if, if you don't, if it is a boil, if it turns into where it penetrates the other dermal layers or deeper into the skin, it's probably not a good idea to extract it yourself. It's probably best to let a professional, um, maybe an esthetician do the extraction for you. Um, I've known people that have tried to extract their own furuncles at home and they neglect to pull the hair out that's causing it, and so it just gets reinfected. Acute bacterial infection. All right, last one, children, is carbuncle. Who's got carbuncle? SD sound off, nail tech sound off, Cosmos sound off. Carbuncle is a group of what? Go. A furry uncle. <laughs> That's what I use. That's it's, it's funny. Okay. What's a carbuncle? A group of boils. Yes. A group of blisters. Very good. All right. Caused by anytime you have those, infection of, is, is present under the skin. It's actually a grouping cluster. Monica Murga. Very good. Awesome. Awesome. You guys did so great. Boil clusters, yes. Yeah, so it, it's characterized by not just one singular, but it's actually a grouping. So that's the difference between a furuncle and a carbuncle. A group of furuncles. Exactly right, Lauren. All right. So what I'm going to do, it's 10.59. This hour went by pretty fast. I've had a great time with you guys. Let's do, go ahead and do a final roll call. Thank you to the teachers for helping me out this morning. I was kind of nervous about this one because I wasn't quite, quite prepared like I needed to be, but hopefully you guys got a lot of good information. Thank you, JoJo and Gracie. Um, thank you, students. We love and miss you dearly. Thank you for giving us your time on this beautiful Saturday morning. Thank you, guys. Yes, final roll call it. All right. Bye, 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 everyone. And remember, you guys just hold on to this assignment. You're not turning it into anybody as of yet. So if you need to fill in the answers, if you were a little bit late, no worries. Just go back through the live and take those notes at your own pace. And you guys have a wonderful, wonderful Saturday. Have a wonderful Saturday. See you next time.